Next we have But, okay, let me laugh this thing. Oh, the work it was plugged in. Bunch of stuff together. <laughs> There's a motherfucking <laughs> garlic in here. <laughs> Today, I'm going to show you how to make red pozole from start to finish. And it's going to be a very simple process. So now pozole is made with hominy and hominy is corn. You could buy hominy now, nowadays in cans at the store because we're lucky enough that we could skip this whole step because back then they had to soak corn in lye solution or in lime solution to make it puff up and get rid of the husk. So we're gonna start off with water and we have, I have pork shoulder and we're gonna start cooking it and it's gonna take about two hours. So you wanna make sure that you get this started first. So I'm gonna do 12 quarts of water. And then I got four and a half pounds of beef shoulder that I'm gonna to add to the water. Uh, actually, this is, a, it was four and a half, I think. Four and a half pounds of pork. pork. <laughs> I don't know why I keep saying beef. So I'm gonna do one whole head of garlic cloves into the water and then half an onion into the water. And we're gonna cook that for about two hours and we're gonna skim the impurities. And while that's cooking, we're also gonna make Mexican ponche, which is a hot punch that you serve typically on New Year's. And you can spike it up if you want, but we won't spike ours. So I'm just gonna take away the first layer. I got my garlic clove and then I'm gonna do my onion thing. and I'm just gonna add the whole onion into the pot we're gonna cook bring it to a boil and then we're gonna skim the impurities and I'll show you so here's a little history about pozole and hopefully it doesn't gross you out so pozole was made with prisoners back then so you had, you know, the Aztecs, they all, they all were cannibalism. So they would sacrifice a human, which was normally a prisoner, and then they would sacrifice a heart and they'll throw the body down the pyramid. Because when you threw the body down the pyramid, as it fell down, your meat tenderized, and then they created pozole using human meat. It wasn't until the 1500s when the Spanish came and told them that cannibalism was bad, that they replaced the recipe with pork which people say pork tastes like human. I don't know that. But that's a little history about pozole. Back then, it was inspired by human meat. So now, you just put this on high heat until it boils. The reason that we end up eating pozole on special occasions is, believe it or not, corn, to the Aztecs, the corn god created us humans. And so they would, they would only eat hominy because it's made out of corn on special occasions. But... You, on the other hand, can make pozole whenever you want, and then you don't even have to use human meat. <laughs> Another thing you want to add to your meat while it's cooking is salt. So you can do salt to taste, and I have coarse salt, but I'm gonna do about two tablespoons, and I'm gonna cook that with the meat. <laughs> so, in my blender, I'm gonna add some chile anchos, and chile anchos are just, you can find them in Mexican grocery store mar or markets and they're just dried up chili. So I'm gonna add six of them to the whole packet. And then we're gonna do chile guajillo. And again, you can find these in Mexican markets in the Mexican section. So we're gonna add six of those. So I have my blender here, and I'm gonna add the chilies. And you wanna add hot water, and you're gonna soak this for about 25 to 30 minutes. But because I have other stuff that I'm gonna show you how to cook, we're gonna add this now. 
and we're gonna add the lid just to go ahead and soften your chilies. So these are the impurities. So during the cooking process, you wanna skim through it, use a ladle, use a spoon, whatever you have, and just get rid of all these coagulated proteins from the top because they'll make your soup taste bitter and you don't want bitter soup. Now I'm gonna show you how quick and easy it is to make ponche navideño. And ponche navideño is Mexican punch and traditionally served in Christmas or New Year's. And it's very simple to make. Ponche navideño traditionally is made in Mexican gatherings. And it's something very good and your whole house is more like citrus. So today we're gonna make it and it is very simple. We're gonna start with two and a half quarts of water. And you're gonna bring that to a simmer. To this water, I'm gonna add piloncillo. And piloncillo is Mexican brown sugar. If you don't have this, you could go to um, your regular market and get brown sugar, but you wanna make sure you add some molasses to it because this has molasses or else it won't taste the same. And we're gonna add that to the pot and we're gonna let that dissolve. And it's just so fun. It looks like a pyramid. To that, we're gonna add uh, four cinnamon sticks. And again, I'm gonna put this recipe in the description and it also will be on my website when it launches, which by the way, we're working on having a brand new website to show you all these recipes. Cause again, we are still doing cake with it videos, but this is all cooking now. So the whole channel is gonna change. Next we have tejocotes. And these you can find in the Mexican market. So if you don't find them fresh, like I did, um, you can find them frozen, but fresh works better. And all you're gonna do is cut these in half and add it here. So these actually taste like a cross between a very bland guayaba and an apple mixed together. You can eat it raw or cook it, but just cut them in half and we're gonna put them in the pot. If you're using them frozen, you could wait after the 15 minute simmer and then add it at the end because they're already cooked. We're gonna simmer this for 15 minutes. And then once we simmer it, we're gonna prepare the other stuff as, that's gonna go in it. So I have tamarind here, and these are very sweet and earthy and it's popular in Mexican cuisine. So is Indian and everything else. I'm gonna show you how to prepare it. So all I'm gonna do is, you're gonna take the shell off. And then you wanna take these little, as much as you can of these little veins and roots that are growing in it. And that's the tamarind paste. That's the tamarind pot, and we're gonna need about two cups of these that we're gonna to add to the pot. So once you peel all of them, you should have these dry pods, but we're not gonna add it yet. We're just gonna prepare everything and then 15 minutes should go by and we'll add it to the pot. Next we have guayabas, which is my favorite. I'm a sucker for these. If you wanna poison me, this is how you do it. So for the guayabas, they always have that fruity, earthy kind of smell to it, but it's like very citrusy. So we're gonna cut these right in half. You could quarter them if you want, but I'm just gonna do halves because I think it's gonna look nice because they kind of shrink and when you plate it in the cup, you have a nice half. So all you wanna do is go ahead and quarter these and save, reserve them for later. What do you mean half? Oh, we're gonna half these <laughs> and then save them for later. We need sugar cane. You can find sugar cane frozen already chopped for you, but I found the fresh one. So I'm gonna use the fresh one. I'm gonna show you how to prepare it. So this top here normally bends and that is a dry part so we're going to chop this side and then we're going to chop like the last chunk towards the end and then i'll show you how to prepare the rest so i've got my meat cleaver and i'm going to chop right about here and if you can see the inside you have all this and that's the sugar cane but nowadays we get our sugar from beets so commercially we get our sugars our table sugar from beets and there you have it again you could buy this already frozen and chopped but i like working hard so i'm going to do this so you're going to need about 
five pieces, so about five inches, three inches each. So I'm just gonna chop this up. You, you wanna go ahead and trim the outside. And you can use your knife. You just lay it flat, and then you go ahead and take out about an eighth of an inch. You wanna expose all these sweet fibers because that's where all the sugar sweet comes from. So again, an eighth of an inch. And go ahead and use your knife, go all the way down. And do that for all the pieces you have. So now that you have somewhat of a smaller piece, you'll go ahead and cut it in half lengthwise. And this will be good for garnish at the same time. And then you do this for all of them. Then we have some apples next. You could use red ones, but to me that's gonna make it too sweet. So I'm gonna use the green varieties or yellow because they're a little more uh, citrusy and better. Plus we got brown sugar and the cane sugar, so I don't want to be too sweet. So these, I'm just gonna cut in half and then quarter them and then cut them in eighths. Once I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and cut them in threes. And you don't have to cut them this small, but I want them to be slightly smaller. That way it's easier to enjoy when you're eating them. And then finally we have raisins. So I'm using half a cup. So I'm just gonna eyeball that. It doesn't have to be as accurate. And we can all add everything to the punch now. So we're gonna go ahead and add everything we cut into the punch and we're gonna let it simmer and not boil for about an hour. So I got my sugar canes. I have my tamarind. I have my apples. And then I have my guava. I don't like saying guava, I like saying guava. I'm Mexican. <laughs> Trust me, this won't last long. You can actually freeze this and it'll last you two weeks in the freezer, but it's not gonna last long. So I have all this here and I'm just gonna simmer it for about an hour. You wanna go check as you're skimming the impurities, a lot of the water is gonna evaporate. So you wanna go ahead and add some more water just to make up for all the water that has evaporated. Then after you're done cooking your meat and it's tender and ready to go, and you skim all the impurities, we're gonna add the chiles that we soaked. So we're just gonna blend this and then add that to the stock, to the broth. <laughs> oh, the work it was plugged in. <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> and finally using a, not a fine mesh but somewhat of a finer mesh because or else the chilies won't pass through you're going to strain it into the soup and then you can use a spoon or a whisk and then just whisk it so you see all this sauce is going in To the soup, I'm also gonna add about a teaspoon of Mexican oregano. And make sure it's Mexican oregano because Mexican oregano is different than the Americanized version that we use in America. <laughs> Mexican oregano has, is more pungent, is more strong. So it's definitely gonna change the flavor. And that's the key thing there is to use Mexican oregano. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my final ingredients to it. So another reason, as I mentioned, why we eat this on special occasions is because the God who created humans and Aztecs is the same God who created us. So they take this as something sacred. So how many, and you could buy it in all the stores, supermarkets, now carry it already prepared for you. Thankfully, you don't have to prepare it. So how many taste like tortillas? And technically, how many is corn? When you pop popcorn and you expose it to heat and dry heat, it expands. So how many is the opposite? You cook popcorn in water with lye or lime or lime concentration and that pops the, the kernel underwater and then they can remove the husk easily. And that takes hours and days. So thankfully now you could just buy it already made. So to this, I'm gonna add three cans 
And again, the recipe will be included on the link and on the website. After this, I'm also gonna take out the, okay. After this, I'm also gonna take off the garlic and the onion because that was just added for flavor. I can't find the onion. <laughs> Next, we're gonna make the toppings that go for pozole because, I mean, you could eat it as is, but you can't eat it without the toppings. So over the toppings, I have cabbage, and I'm not using a lot, so now grocery stores wrap them for you and you could buy a half of it. Onion, and radish, <laughs> I was gonna say beets, and radishes. So I'm gonna show you how to prepare these, and good thing I have these cute little bowls to start on the side. <laughs> Small dice. You cut the onion vertically. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. For the cabbage, I'm just gonna shred some. So I'm gonna cut it in half. And then using your knife, you're just gonna cut some in fine shreds. Bunch of stuff together. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just gonna go ahead and using my kitchen scissors. And it's messy, but that's okay. <laughs> so for the radish, I'm just gonna trim the green part and cut them fine. The secret to get the best out of your limes or lemon is first of all, grab it and then roll it like this to get the juices flowing. And if it's still tough, you can microwave it for five seconds. My punch has been cooking for about an hour, so it's ready. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to serve it. And it's very fun. So normally you serve it like in a Mexican traditional um, ceramic mug, but for the purpose, for visual purposes, we're gonna serve it in a clear glass cup so you can see how amazing and cool this is. And I wish you could smell it. So you wanna make sure you get enough and a lot of the fruit in there. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> see that and then you can also add some of the cinnamon stick cinnamon <laughs> stick <laughs> you can add some of the cinnamon stick some of the sugar cane to make it look more good And there you go. You have a delicious ponche navideño and it smells so good in here. Like it's the complex flavors of the apple, the guayaba, the cinnamon, the sweetness from the piloncillo, from the cane sugar. Oh my God, it is so good. And it's not complete if you want to serve it with some rum. And finally, we're gonna plate the pozole. So you wanna make sure you get enough of the hominy and the soup, the broth, and the meat should fall off by itself. I can't get the meat. <laughs> <laughs> Of me. <laughs> <laughs> and then come over to this side and I'll show you how to plate. There's a motherfucking garden here. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And then wait the light. <laughs> and then finally to finish it off, it's good as is, but we're gonna add some some meat. So we're gonna put some onion, some cabbage, some radish, and then finally. A touch of lime. Oh, that is so good. You know what's missing? A little more oregano. And that is how you make Mexican bread pozole. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And again, this used to be called cake with it because all we did was cakes, but now we're doing cakes and food. Cut. Go. <laughs> Next we have... <laughs> I'm gonna think of something sad. <laughs> Your crayon tree didn't grow. Ready? Go. Next we have. <laughs> Next we have. <laughs> Go. Next we have tecojotes. <laughs>